Hey guys, it's Jamie. Um, today I wanted to talk about the async pipe with you guys, um, and that's just a pipe that allows you to load resources which um, change over time, such as observables or uh, promises. Okay, so they have some examples here on their site. Um, so I've uh, got the simplest example working uh, on my own blank site, so you can see like how it actually functions. And their simplest example is just an observable piped through async like this. And then call next on the observable once a second with the new time. So you see the view updates over and over with uh, the new value here. Um, <clears throat> and what that looks like inside of the code is um, this. They just make a, a observable, which if you guys aren't familiar, an observable is um, just an object which um, other code can subscribe to changes from. Um, so in our case, there isn't really anything subscribing to changes except the view. So that's kind of the beauty of the async pipe. Um, so basically, we set up the observable here, and then inside the HTML, so we take the time object, and then we use pipe async, and then the view itself will actually subscribe to changes from that object despite it being an observable. So like an observable is just an object. So if you try to display it without this async pipe, um, you'll just see like the word object because Angular doesn't know how to display that. So that's why it's important to use the async pipe. Um, and then as far as like updating, uh, calling next on the observable, what's happening is um, when the observable of type string is created like so, um, as soon as it is, it calls uh, set interval, which is just a repeating interval. So every uh, 1,000 milliseconds, um, in other words, once a second, it's going to call this function here, um, which just calls um, observer dot next. So that's like the key thing with observables is you call next on them, and then all of the subscribers are notified. So in that case, the, that's the view. So the view will be notified um, that the observable has changed to be um, <coughs> the current date time uh, converted into a string. So the end result is that once a second, just like we saw, um, the time object changes to whatever the current time is it's rendered on the view um, thanks to async. OK, let's check out the other example. Um, and so I'll show you what this one looks like first, so it's uh, more intuitive. So basically they have some text here describing how it's used, it's a promise pipe through async, and then there's a button that as soon as you click it, resolves a promise and then changes the text. Alright, so let's have a look at this TypeScript. So basically uh, we have that greeting object, um, which is the promise, which can either be a string or null, and initially it's set to null. Uh, now in the constructor, it just initializes it, basically. And if you guys aren't familiar, a promise is kind of like a real-life promise. Like, if you promise something, um, you expect to you expect something to happen. Like, if I promise that I'm going to upload a video tomorrow, you expect that I'm going to upload a video tomorrow. Or that I'm going to give you some reason, like, I'm sorry, like, I was just too busy, I couldn't upload a video. So this is the same thing. So when we declare the promise, it says, OK, this promise promises to return a string. Uh, if it can. And so the promise is a function which you pass to this constructor, and the function takes two arguments, a resolve and a reject. So resolve is a function um, that can be called within here to say, okay, um, I'll keep my promise, here's the string I promised you. Um, and then the second parameter is reject, and so re you can call reject if you, for some reason, you can't return the string, just call reject. Um, and so since we want our application to resolve the promise whenever they click um, resolve here, um, basically we store the resolve parameter inside of a variable right here. So it's a function. So as soon as the user clicks, we say, OK, here's the string we promised you. I'm not really sure what this little exclamation point is for, but uh, we don't need that. <laughs> so basically, we made a promise, which we store the resolve for later so we can resolve it um, when the user clicks on the button 
And then as soon as the user clicks on the button, then we resolve the promise. And then um, we set this arrive to be true. So this arrived, by the way, is just a Boolean that um, is like whether or not uh, the, the promise has been fulfilled. So like it starts out not fulfilled or false. Um, and then as soon as the user um, clicks it, it goes to true. And then the next time they click it, um, they're going to reset it. So like. Um, as soon as you click resolve, um, then it's like, oh yay, it's resolved. But then if you reset it, it um, sets the promise to be a new promise. And then, so it's basically just like a toggle. It's a loop. Um, yeah, so hopefully that, that made sense to you guys. It might be a little weird if it's your first time seeing that. Um, but yeah, let me know if you like this video in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions as well. Um, and otherwise, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.